Perfect. Um, my name is Victoria Michael. I'm the founder of Unoya Collective. Unoya means to think beautifully. As a nonprofit, it's our mission to create a world which thinks beautifully by providing mental wellness to children uh, through our global initiatives. Um, oh man. Um, through our global initiatives, especially to those children who have been affected by abuse and neglect. In the early 1990s, CDC and the Kaiser Permanente teamed up. They evaluated 17,000 participants to better understand the relationship between ACEs, or adverse childhood experiences, and adult health and well-being. They found that the wider the extent and exposure of 10 types of family dysfunction, abuse, and neglect, the higher the risk for maladaptive behaviors, mental and physical illness, and even early death. Here are brain scans of two three-year-old boys. One was raised in a healthy home, and the other was severely neglected. The neglected boy has largely dormant regions in his brain, um, especially in the temporal lobes, which are heavily responsible for regulating emotion. Um, since I was raised in a healthy home, and all my shitty life experiences didn't happen until I was older, um, I have an A score of zero. And I am of the lucky few. Um, the CDC reports that 67% of people um, have an A score of at least one or more. So statistically, you're either one of them or you're sitting between two of them. These people are our family, our friends, our loved ones, and sometimes even our children. Dr. Vincent Felitti is one of the pioneers of the revolutionary and still widely underutilized ACE study, and he insists that ACEs are the main determinant of the health and social well-being of our nation, dare I say, world. So the next time that you're watching the news or you're dealing with that asshole from work, and you think to yourself, what, what the hell is wrong with this person? Try asking instead, what happened to them? The cycle of pain is powerful and prevalent. And often, without treatment, that pain turns to hate. When that happens, the victim becomes a villain and our empathy fades to apathy. And when that hate doesn't turn outwards, it often turns inwards resulting in re-victimization and self-destruction. Um, so today, I want to share with you a few tools we employ through our programs uh, to promote healing um, and to create a world which thinks beautifully. First, acknowledge your pain, and maybe you have in the first few minutes. Um, we should have all listened to the late king when he said, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. And the good news is that you can. Um, that same rapid proliferation that made the brain so vulnerable to trauma in our earliest years may not be so rapid, but it's still doing its thing. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt, reorganize, and regenerate healthy cells while pruning the old ones. Um, quickly, Marvin, just want to thank you for being my model RMC. Um, very nice. Uh, find a therapist. A, someone who can literally help you rewire your brain. These are some of my DIY faves. So nature, art, if you don't know where to start, take Hemingway's advice, write clear and hard about what hurts. And meditation is also a powerful practice, but the most impactful way to negate the effects of childhood uh, trauma is building healthy relationships. Human connection, as validated by Dr. Bruce Perry on a recent 60 Minutes special with Oprah. She elaborated to say, what he really means is love. He's a scientist, he's not gonna say love, but it really is how we're valued, cared for, respected, and loved. She then went on to speak about that person for, for her after years of sexual abuse, her fourth grade teacher. So be kind. You never know what people are going through and you don't know how an act of kindness can be transformation, transform, transformative in someone's life, which you would know if you saw Deadpool 2. It's a really good movie. <laughs> and last, I want to share with you something my therapist shared with me. She said, it isn't until you do the work of healing to become whole and confident humans that you can be authentically kind and gracious ones. So be kind, not just authentically, but intentionally and especially to those who you feel don't deserve it. It is very likely they are the ones that need it the most. And if you are unable, then maybe it's time you spoke with a man or a woman in the mirror.
Thank you.